Okay, the purpose of this video is to uh, give you an example of a system and the signals associated with it, and hopefully it will um, uh, provide some background or some sort of almost a cultural idea of uh, how we think about signals and systems. Um, so let's assume that we have a car. I'll draw it in red because that means it's a nice sporty car. There we go. That is one nice looking car. And uh, we'll put, I guess these would be white walls on it. Okay, now we're oftentimes going to be interested in something like the following. Um, somewhere in this car, we have a gas pedal. And this gas pedal, through some magical connection, sends um, information to an engine put the uh, radiator fan out here. There's some connection between the gas pedal and the engine and uh, um, that the gas pedal basically controls how much gas goes to the uh, to the engine. And then uh, the engine is connected through a transmission to the wheels. We'll make this a front wheel drive so we don't have to run a whole transmission and uh, drive shaft through the rest of the car. So this is probably a very badly illustrated um, version of what you already know. But the idea is I press on the gas, that puts more gas in, or press on the gas pedal, uh, that sends more gas into the engine, and then the uh, engine speeds up and that causes uh, additional torque on the wheels which typically causes the car to speed up. Okay, so this is a pretty complex system. If I want to know exactly what's going on in here in this system, I would have to know uh, all sorts of things about my fuel injection system. It might be this. I've got pistons. I've got rods. A crankshaft. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. And then I've got a transmission, which eventually gets torque applied to the wheel. And that extra torque then causes my car to speed up, to go faster. Now, sometimes I actually need to understand that all that detail, but quite often, conceptually at least, I don't. And so one way to model this is as a system. Okay. And this system has an input. In this case, the input might be the gas pedal. It has an output. And the output might be the speed of the car. Okay, so um, this is a again a basic uh, way of representing a whole car just as a black box and there's lots of good stuff in this box but we don't really look at it in detail a lot of times. Now if I'm building a cruise control Hopefully you know how that works. So this represents the car. Then what I do is I develop another system. And this system measures the velocity of the car. Again, this guy out here. And it measures the velocity and then it goes and controls the amount of gas going to the engine with the idea that it's going to keep the uh, velocity of the car at some set value. Okay, This is an example of a feedback loop and we use these sorts of feedback loops all the time in signals and systems analysis and in designing systems to do what we want it to do. Um, so uh, that's the basic concept. There's a couple things, though, that are sort of interesting to think about. 
suppose that uh, I'm driving on a windy day and maybe that I've got a Hummer which has the uh, highest drag coefficient of any commercially available vehicle. Well, I guess not of a Mack truck, but a uh, passenger vehicle. And so I've got a windy day and this wind is uh, changing the velocity of the car. Okay, the wind, you get a strong headwind, the velocity goes down, you get a strong tailwind, the velocity goes up. Well, my cruise control really needs to be able to respond to these changes as well. So one thing that you often see done, in addition to the input of a system, you might have a second input which you think of as a disturbance. And the idea is this, the disturbance is something that you don't have control over, but still affects your system. So uh, my input, I can change. I can change the amount of gas going to the engine. But the disturbance, I have no control over. Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, it, sometimes it's big, sometimes it's small. So one of the goals of a, a control system is to deal with disturbances. Make sure that if you've got disturbances in your system, it doesn't um, affect how your system works. So one last thing, uh, this system has one input and one output. If you don't think of the disturbance as an input, and you typically don't. So this is what we would call a single input, single output system, okay, or SISO. So there it is, an example of a system of the way we represent a complex mechanical object with a much simpler uh, block diagram. And we're going to talk later on about how to characterize this block diagram so that we can uh, make the car do what we want it to do.